need another repot video i'm telling you if i can help it then they're gonna come now faster and faster if i can get into my pots that i need to get into and uh yeah big orchid an epidendrum cross we have changed location new roots coming i want to clean up the rhizome get rid of some older canes get rid of a resident fern and all that fun stuff and the reason we've changed location is because of her size i want to have clear airspace because my focus should be on the roots and not seeing if i'm bashing away at my tolumnias against the hedge where i'm normally stood so really really al fresco today i'm totally exposed also to the sound of traffic all good fun or natural so i squeezed this pot a little bit already yesterday that video is my example of what to look for if you have opaque pots or if you want to change into some more decorative pots and get away from plastic clear see-through containers. I'm doing little clips of every repotting that I have, talk through, and then usually the next day it's going to be followed by the repotting. Not the golden rule because you never know if there is a care collab that has to take priority or not. <laughs> but that's the idea. Small clips, what to look for if you don't see the roots in your pot. Little guidelines, little checkpoints to make a concerted decision. Now, this orchid I could leave in this pot for at least another year. She's got plenty of room. Clearly, the reason I'm taking her out is because it's an opportune time for me to clean her up and get rid of the naked canes in the back. Well, there is one leafed cane in the back, but still, it's not here nor there. I wanna clean her up. And also, seeing as the pot is very, very, let's say, pliable, as you can see, even after the soaking, I'm not experiencing any harsh resistance that I used to have with this orchid two years ago. which means there was still plenty of aeration in the pot and a repot isn't necessary. I just want her cleaned up. Get the fern out, you know? Take the chance to do it now instead of waiting another season. Might as well get to it as we can. So the idea being just to get into where the roots are at the rhizome because I want to cut through here. I want to get rid of all of this in the back here. So yeah, instead of just doing a quick clean up and repot, this turns out it's gonna be a deep clean and repot. And that's great that my support is loose. No, it's not because I haven't untied it at the top. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself. I'm trying to beat the traffic here. <laughs> Okay, let's get you out. Goodness me, it's noisy for an afternoon. Jeez Louise, people. Try to time it in such a way that I find the quiet time. But it seems that siesta in Spain is now something of the past. <laughs> there is no more siesta. <laughs> All right, that gives me the opportunity to get rid of the moss which is, in my opinion, not an issue around this orchid. Sometimes, especially for my dry climate, the moss is a beautiful, beautiful addition that helps me with humidity and such things. But in order to get at the rhizome right here, I need to get rid of the leca. Don't want to destroy my secateurs. I'll be picking away at this like some of the birds have been doing on my orchid tops, thinking they're gonna find worms hidden behind the moss. My moss, naturally populated moss, and uh, kind of destroyed the visual of the same. And they then left disappointed because there were no worms and left me with a scraggly looking orchid top with moss kind of gone. Sorry, maiden hair, you gotta go too. You'll be back, I know you will. Do you know that it's funny? I never was able to grow maidenhair fern here successfully. It's my favorite, favorite fern. Never managed to grow it as a house plant. And suddenly, thanks to cousin It, who has it in him in abundance, probably brought in 
from the nursery he was at, and I now have maidenhair fern growing happily in many, many different pots. Surprise! And here I am pulling it out now, but yeah. If we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this. I'm very happy that after two years, I still have a fabulous root system. It is healthy. It is a pleasure to work with these reed stem epidendrums, even though they are a little bit cumbersome. They need a lot of air space, but still, they are happy, happy root growers. Look at that. Whoa, let me get you in. This might be easier than I thought. Let's see if we can check this out together and close by. Let me get down a little bit. I don't want my transmitter and receiver meeting so close up. Okay, let's see. You see, I was just pulling it apart gently and it kind of came off relatively easily. You see that? <laughs> Sorry for the jiggle. Well, well, well. Oh my goodness, now I just have to be careful because all the roots are entangled. And there's still good roots in there, so it's not like I can just now, well, I could just go all ninja and pull aggressively, but I don't want to do that. Look at this root system. So my head was really close there to the receiver. Note to self, and also for editing purposes, I need to keep in mind when it gets into the interference and starts crackling. Can't get away from doing something with the audio, ever. <laughs> it's my nemesis. It's a beautiful root system. I'd like to preserve as much of it as possible. Okay, now the thing here is, you're gonna see me fiddling around, getting this out, being as careful as possible, and then afterwards, you're going to see me chop 30% of the other root system that's going back in the pot off. And you're going to wonder, why did I even bother? Well, I like to preserve as much of the root system as I possibly can. And then afterwards, I can be as radical as I want to be. But to be radical right at the beginning, it's like, well, if I do a lot of damage, I have no way to come back from that. So being pedantic right off the at the start, being as careful as possible, pretending that I'm going to try and save every root, will then give me the luxury of being a little bit more radical towards the end when we do the Figaro cut on this orchid. Okay, I still haven't gotten it apart, but what I'm doing here now is seeing where the biggest entanglements are, trying to do a little bit of root weaving, but because the root system is so vigorous, what I'm also going to do is start to make my life a little bit easier and start to cut roots as I see them. If they are interfering, I will try and get to them as long as possible, the entire length of the root if possible, but I'm gonna be cutting them off to help me out to get this untangled. Otherwise, we're gonna be here all day, all night even. So I'm just assessing who is going to come willingly and unweave themselves without me having to go a little bit too radical. You see how they are all intertwined right here Got one going around the back over there, and I've just cracked it. I heard a click right here, so this is the front piece, this is the back piece. I'm not saying I don't want to conserve the back piece, because I want to assess whether I can keep it, but I do want to make sure that I'm a little bit more careful about the front piece. That is my main point of interest. You got roots circling all the way down and around the back here. And if they don't untangle themselves easy with a little bit of a pull and a jiggle very, very gently, I mean, I'm not yanking, 
just pulling and very gently trying to see if there's a give, if anybody's gonna let go back there, and they just have, you see? Just let go. Now, all that fuss, I may eventually cut that root off anyway. But at the beginning, let's just pretend we need every single root. And we just do a little bit of massage, and then they do eventually succumb to us being more persistent. <laughs> And then they do eventually separate. And just still be gentle. Just because we're almost there doesn't mean that we can now lose what we were trying to achieve. So just one more little bit of entanglement right here. Where are you? I just heard another click. I hope it was on the right side of the piece as opposed to <laughs> the one that is of importance with the new roots. Let's see. Are you going to come willingly or do I cut you? There we go. I think that was the main culprit right there. Nope, we still have another one. Oh, you know, let me tell you something. Every time I repot, I love the texture of roots. I love feeling them. When I feel roots, I can also determine, I mean, I know this orchid now, but let's just say on a new orchid that I get in, when I feel the roots, I can determine their behavior pretty much in the pot. And then I can pretty much, let's say 80% know the setup and get it right simply by the feeling of the root, the texture, how it's behaving. So, as you can see, that worked out well in the four years that I've had this orchid. This is its second repot with me. Back to the texture, they feel like al dente pasta, spaghetti, where you think you need another 30 seconds to get them to the perfect al dente. So they're a little bit on the hard side, but just at the point that you're about to just take them out of the water and put them in the frying pan with your delicious sauce that you've already been stirring up and reducing nicely on the stove next to your pot of pasta. Speaking of next to, here we have them. We've got this one here. I'm interested to look at it. I don't just want to discard it. The roots are all viable. They're all firm, except let's have a look. You see, two years ago, you can see the chop that I did, very clear lines but the roots aren't dead. <laughs> they just didn't branch. So that's interesting to note. They didn't branch as I had expected. So what we're gonna do with this one now is check and see if there's any chance of this one actually being used for propagation. I mean, it's the beginning of the season. I have space indoors where they, I can baby them. They don't need to be outdoors as divisions. They need a special kind of care and these these guys are tough, but still, if I was doing this, let's say September, October, there's no way I would consider using this little piece here, which is really very, very <coughs> questionable. This is previous spider mite damage. It's all been dealt with, but you see, um, yeah, this is nothing really pretty to look at, write home about, but seeing as it's at the beginning of the season, I am keeping this piece. We're gonna work with it because it does have eyes. And we may just have made it angry. <laughs> and suddenly it's gonna go, well, watch me, and produce a new lead or two new leads even because eyes are there. There we go. There's plenty of eyes. And you can make an orchid very angry when you do this to it. Even in the back here, there's eyes. <laughs> so let's see. If we've provoked this one enough for it to respond, there's even an eye down here. I'm gonna get some cinnamon, cover that up, and it's going to go into one of my clear bottle things with water and a little bit of hob material. Nah, we've got enough material here for water and humidity. Check this out. <laughs> you gotta love these orchids. This is our main piece of interest though. That can stay unless it falls out all on its own. I want to get these old fern roots out. They have no business being in the pot, even if they come back with another fern, that's fine. At least then we can say we have a new fern. 
And then of course I'm going to just be trimming away the dead stuff. And there's not much to it because even what looked dead at the tip, I took it off at the base, it's still alive. So I could literally just be chopping off at the tip, save myself some roots. But this is now about the health and the climate of the pot for another two years. We've already got plenty of aeration. If it wasn't for the division, getting that ratty piece off the back, then of course this orchid would not have been in for a repot this year. I could have had it for another year. Again, determined by the fact that I had flex in the pot while I was squeezing it and there was plenty of flex in the pot. I was not concerned about the climate or the health of the pot. But we got the nasty out. Now that we are in this position right here, then why not give it a bit of a clean? Seriously hoping that I'm in some form of focus here. And if I keep hearing those clicks, then maybe my plans are going to change because there is no need to be doing what I'm doing if I'm going to do a lot of damage. Because what I want to do now, and I know this is going to look radical, but I have new roots coming. I want to maintain a healthy root system. Hey, now that we've divided it, even maybe for three years, and it is very clear that this is a vigorous root system. If we make any mistakes, it is a forgiving root system. Not only is it branching, but it is very, very vigorous. So no fear here. We need to chop it off. And that is what I'm going to do. I know that this doesn't seem normal, but trust me, I know I say that with a little bit of, you know, who are you to say to trust you? I don't grow the same way as you. But even in inorganic media, we're always looking for the climate, the health of the root system in the pot. Now, I'm not going up as to the base like I did two years ago, clearly, because I just noticed the roots were viable, but being so close to the base, they were not happy branchers. So it's like they said, okay, you do this to me, that's the end of it, I'm not gonna branch for you. So we're gonna keep them a little bit longer but still give them a good trim. This long stuff is all wonderful and beautiful, but so is this. <laughs> you know, bob cut kind of thing. The things that we consider ourselves here. So there's a dead root back there, which is really at this point not here nor there, makes no difference. But now that I've seen it from that one angle, I want to find it and get rid of it from the other angle. And of course, I've lost track of it. Aha, maybe it was that one. So we'll turn it around again. Did we find it? Are you really dead? No, you just look horrible at the tip. So we'll just pull that belayman off. There we go. How about all the maiden hair roots? How about those? Something that we also were to consider as we went in. That looks pretty good to me. There's a salt covered little dried up root. We can get rid of that. Still viable, all good. You see now, hey, <laughs> maybe, well, this is the front lead, hopefully 2023. And maybe the back lead, this eye right here. That would be nice. Hmm? 2023, what do you think? Epidendrum multiforme. Very multiforme. Beautiful, beautiful green, white sprays of flowers. Very long lasting as well. Right. We've done our bit. The question now being, do we? Well, there's a little bit of a long one still down here we'll take that off do we put cinnamon do we put cinnamon i think we should do i want to cut a proper edge i don't think i need to cut a proper edge here just a little bit of cinnamon but first i want to give it some more water just give the roots a little bit of a dunk so that while the cinnamon dries out before potting her up at least the roots won't dry out too much while we wait for the cinnamon to dry. So we'll just put her into 
the pot that has the calcium and magnesium in it and soak those roots just for a little bit longer. And then we'll get the cinnamon and we'll look at the other piece. Are you gonna stay? That's better. Let's give this piece its best chance here. A dab of cinnamon, there we go. I'm just gonna flush off the velamen of the roots here. Let's see, any of the residual dust? Let's just flush off that extra. There we go. And now this can dry, give them a spritz. Maybe give them a little bit of a chop just there. And there we go, will you fit? <laughs> okay, a Greek yogurt tub, why not? <laughs> you get a Greek yogurt tub. Here we go, let's get you out. And when I get the Greek yogurt tub, all this can dry off beautifully. I'm using the same support all set to go, but as the support is tucked up against the side of the pot, as I'm potting this piece up into the middle, I'm just gonna adjust the support a little bit and bring it more into the middle. Normally I like my white supports, but at this length, they are flimsy. And this is reinforced wire that I used with a drill to straighten, and the whole texture has straightened. So with a few little kinks, ta-da, there we go. Support is in the middle. So that's fine by me. What we're going to do is eliminate the loop. There's no need for a loop here. I don't need to raise the leka up for the wicking. The roots are going straight into the pot, and that is why there will be no need for leka at the base, because the roots are already reaching there. The only thing now is to weave the orchid into place. <laughs> roots and all. Support and all. And I'm sorry that you can't see what's going on at the top. I think the more interesting part is down here anyway, but I'm just holding the support against the cane that is obviously right by the cut, positioning her into the middle, not up against the edge of the pot. I've just made a major cut. Hopefully we can trigger a growth in the back and she can spread herself out evenly. In all of this, we have not affected a single root tip. Not a single nubbin was damaged. I love it when that happens. That is why I like to work with the orchids in repotting when they're at this stage. Okay, are you low enough? Can I push you down a little bit more? Because at the end of the day, she is gonna rise <laughs> once I fill her up with Lekka and start jiggling her a little bit. So let's preempt that and get her a little bit lower than we normally would. Raising up is easy when filling with Lekka. Pushing her back in, not so much. Then we have to start from scratch. Take everything out <laughs> and start from the beginning. Okay, I like that. Make sure I stick with that. And we're gonna be gentle with the roots now. We've been horrible to them up until now. This is calcium, magnesium, and seaweed at a ratio of 60 parts per million of calcium and magnesium and 40 parts per million of seaweed at a pH of 6.3. Okay, let's go gentle here. First cup went in. I'm using large lecker for this one. As she needs a lot, a lot of water, yes, I could be using small lecker as well. There wouldn't be a problem with that. But the roots are also chunky and I want the roots to have space throughout the years. If I bring in the small leka, they are gonna fill in the airspace, air pockets, way too soon. So large leka, and maybe I shouldn't have put seaweed in because I don't think we can really appreciate the effect of the water and how it makes the leka just fall into place much, much easier. Really keeping an eye on the root tips. We've come this far. While I'm jiggling her now, I'm holding her down. Not with a lot of pressure, but I'm definitely, definitely giving sort of a little bit of a resistance with a cane, holding her down. If I have to raise her up, then that is my decision. <laughs> Pretty much <laughs> my decision. <laughs> Let me make sure that I don't get carried away here and block the view.
little bit of a nudge and an encouragement with the fingers as well. There's a big gap over there. So now I'm sort of, you know, tipping the cup in half and half. If I dump it all at once, then I'm gonna cause too much resistance within the lecker itself. So it won't fall as easily into the gap. So, you know, it's like mixing the milk to the batter for your pancakes. Just do it bit by bit or one egg at a time or one egg yolk at a time. Goodness, you know, I don't even know why I keep referring and making analogies when it comes to this practice here and use cooking. I mean, I don't cook that much anymore. <laughs> there must be something in my subconscious mind that makes it happen. Who knows? But I think we can all somehow relate to, you know, cooking practices. When we say bit by bit, gently kneading, gently tickling. Pushing the pastry against the form. <laughs> Flattening it out. Oh, speaking of pastry, digestive butter crumble pastry for a banoffee pie. Oh, yes, I would go for that right now. Okay, what we're gonna do is change location position. You've pretty much seen what I'm doing. My root tips are nowhere near Lekka. I'm gonna change the angle, I'm gonna lift her out of the pot and then check out what the rest of it looks like. This is what she looks like. <clears throat> Still can't reach the top, but here we go. The sun has crept around the patio. We have been here a while. You wouldn't think so when it comes to editing, but we have been here a while. <laughs> so we can drain her. I haven't tied her up against the support just yet, but if I didn't want to, I wouldn't have to because she is so settled in that pot. There really is not an issue. However, I don't want when she comes outside any of that wind that could affect my blooming alley where she lives during the summer to actually come against this orchid. So yes, I am going to tie her off. And this is the new growth, even though it looks like it's the last one at the back. It's come out bang in the middle of the two last growths. So she's gonna be growing nicely into the pot again. The direction of the light is from here clearly because at the beginning, I don't want this one cane to be growing off into an angle that I can't control. So I'm really, really liking this compact wild one. <laughs> Not so wild anymore. We've taken care of that. And here they are, the two pieces now all cleaned up, one in its very, very classy Greek yogurt tub, the other one in the not so shabby self-watering <laughs> pots with its mask. Apart from being a little bit tedious at the beginning, I consider this a success. My leka is still low enough in the pot that once the root finds its way into the pot, I can fill up around it and then we can start again from scratch with a new growth of 2023. But for now, 2022, this orchid for the time being is going back inside where it lives on the glass shelf right up against the terrace window. Not because of any kind of wind or that I'm concerned about it, but it is still too cold at night. This piece is going to be grown in a sort of water culture, semi-water culture kind of style. Calcium magnesium is now at the base. And when that evaporates, then I will leave it for a day or two before filling up with more calcium and magnesium or fertilizer or whatever would be suitable. But yes, if you have made it all the way, I owe you a massive thank you so much for watching, for joining me, keeping me company, keeping me focused and all that fun stuff that happens while you film. Know that your time is very much appreciated and it doesn't go unnoticed. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition though, please, that you stay safe. King really doesn't care what is going on. Anyway, <laughs> take care. Bye.